And then let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, you have healed us of our sin by granting us your forgiveness through the love that you have for us and we accept the grace that you give us. Let us always remember to credit you, to give glory to you for having saved us, for having healed us of the sins. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're going to begin in 2 Kings. A little odd, different this time. And I'll explain why as we go along. Okay? 2 Kings chapter 5. And we can either read the whole story or just this portion of it. So I think we'll just go with this portion of it and see what we remember. Okay? 10 through 14. Oh, five. Oh, there was five. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, that's Naaman, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Devana and Far par the rivers of Damascus better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? <laughs> so he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, Wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored, and became clean like that of a young boy. Okay. Well, do that. Does the story sound a little familiar? Oh, yeah. sure. Okay. Naaman, uh, this Syrian general, was uh, found to have leprosy, and he came to Elisha and said, Cure me, and he said, Go dip yourself in the Jordan. Where was Elisha when Nahum approached him to then ask for a cure? And that is the point that I want to make here. Okay? He was, uh, at the time he seemed to be in what's called Elisha's cave, in the Carmel Range. We'll get to that in a minute. But it's this incident that then Jesus is going to discuss or deal with because he's going to travel through that same general area and he's going to deal with some lepers. And that is where we're going to start now. Okay, it's called the Judean ministry. Now things are changing. He's done in Galilee. And he's going to head south into Judea. He had the transfiguration, the transfiguration, and then he goes and he says, okay, we're out of here. We're going to Jerusalem, as Elisha, Elijah and Moses told, we talked about. Okay, he's going to encounter ten lepers. Right in the same general area that Elisha, Elisha and Nahum had their little spat. Any questions? Okay. These are the different scripture that we will encounter. Don't worry, we'll do one at a time. Okay? So if you have a preference, you might want to pick that off. You'll see one of them, they have single verses and longer verses. I suggest Luke 17 and John 7. All the other ones are just single little verses. But we're progressing with the story of the journey of Jesus. Okay? Alright, and we're going to start, it'll be September of 
29 AD. And in the valley called the, Adri called the Adrilian Valley, which in Galilee and Canaan. He's traveling from Capernaum and he's headed off south. And we'll start with John 7, 2 through 9. I have John 7 up. Okay, would you please read that for us? Sure. Now the Jewish festival of booths was near. So his brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, so that your disciples can also see the works you are doing. For no one wants to be widely known acts in secret. No one wants to be widely known. No one who wants to be widely known. Oh, yeah, there you go. Right. Okay. okay. No one who wants to be widely known acts in secret. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always here. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify against it that its works are evil. Go to the festival yourselves. I'm not going to this festival, for my time has not yet fully come. After this saying, he remained in Galilee. Okay, so... What do you hear here? What's happening? Well, people trying to encourage him to become well known. Who? Which people? His family. Yeah. His family. Yeah. Dude, if you want to be famous, you better publicize. Yeah. To put it in a more a modern vernacular here. Okay? So, and yet it says. For not even his brothers were believing in him. So you can bet that his family all knew the stories from Mary when yes. he was born. Yes. And but that's probably, if anything, really all they knew. We don't know. Uh huh. Hold on, while we deal with this music. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, but so for his brothers to not understand. Is probably no surprise. I mean, what sibling ever has full appreciation for their siblings? Especially if their sibling yeah. is going to be supposed to be, you know, like famous. Yeah, big shot. Big shot. No, come on, I knew him when he was. Mm -hmm. The mother always liked you best. Oh, yeah. some other brothers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's going back a ways. Okay, so the festival of Booths, which happens to be in September, was coming, was close, right? And his brothers say, look, if you want to be famous, get known. Let's go down there and show off. Is that correct? Sounds like it. Sounds like it. Because his brothers did not believe in him. How could they? Well, they didn't. Okay. Anything else here is of interest or it strikes you? Well, this is not a very frequently read text. No, it is not. Um, but in here, Jesus makes some statements. One of them, uh, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it, <laughs> that its deeds are evil. That's right. And realistically, nobody wants to hear that. They want to hear how great they are. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a president telling us how great he is shortly Yeah. today. So, yes. We try to emphasize the better portion of ourselves, whoever we are. Um, we don't try to emphasize just how bad we are, or how poor our thinking, or how stupid we can be. That's basically human nature, isn't it? Okay. And if someone points out <laughs> one's sin, uh -huh. you know, what you're doing is wrong, it's right. sin, you know, we get defensive and Good. Or this person so judgmental and, and they who were they to... Right, they, they attack the person who called their called it on them. And again, that's normal. So we're not talking about anything unusual here. Okay? This seems, for, for the Gospel of John, this is pretty simple. Okay? John can get rather confusing at times. Bless his heart. So here he talks about that his time is not now. 
not yet, right? So he says, I'm not going down to the festival. Is that correct? That's what he says. Good, okay. Um, you go, not me. <clears throat> so he stays. So assumedly, his brothers leave to go to the festival. Okay? All right, any other thoughts here before we move on? Go ahead. This wasn't one of the required ones, though, was it? No. Okay. Yeah, but who wants to miss out on a good festival? Oh, yeah, for sure. Even if you have to walk 60 miles to get to it, right? Yeah. And well, 60 back. But, I mean, re realistically, you know... <laughs> hey, we all things, need a break. Yeah, but these things only come around once a year. Yeah, yeah. five or six of them once a year. Yeah. No. No, I agree. If you can, you want to. Mm -hmm. You want to get down there and reenact the uh, journey, the exodus, which is what they're doing. They're going down, build booths, and remembering the exodus. Okay? And sure, you'd like to do that. Okay, here we go. Luke 9, 51. Don't worry, I'm going to put it up here for you. When the days were approaching for his ascension... He was determined to go to Jerusalem. I'm not going. But now something is, he's saying in another gospel, I, I'm determined to go to Jerusalem now. I'm going to leave Galilee and I'm going to set my face to Jerusalem. Now this is later though. Is it? I would think so if he's headed for Jerusalem. Matthew 19.1 When Jesus had finished these words, he departed from Galilee. Mark 10, 1. Getting up, he went from there to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan. So let's set this up. It sounds like, from the way I have it organized, right, that he says, I'm not going to the festival, sends the brothers ahead, then he decides to go to the festival, or at least to go south. This is all the same time according to the time frame of the journey of Jesus. These all are parallel texts, folks. So, let's go back to Luke now and find out what he did do. Luke 17, 11 through 19. Okay, thank you. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Oh, Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? <laughs> then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Okay, so following the text in sequence, following the order, Jesus says to the disciples, I'm not going down there. Okay, then there's a, something happens and he's decided to go and as he starts going down, he's going to pass through this valley of Israelian where Elisha, Elisha had healed Naaman of leprosy. And here he encounters ten lepers. Okay, what about this is of interest to you? What do you see? What's something you didn't know, something you do know, a thought, a question? This is all we father read it. Only one would say, that only one would say thank you. Ten percent. And, yeah. and it's just, I, well, so the years that's bothered me reading it. Right. Actually, though, ten percent is a pretty high number. Of people who are polite enough to do that. Some, it's in our nature to just go, 
I deserve it. No is right. He's going to make a point here. Well, Go ahead. so so within the law, yes, when you are a, a leper and been ostracized because of your leprosy, yes, the law says to if you're cured to go and show yourself to a priest. That's yes. the first thing you do before you go into society. Yes. Now it may be that these people were trying to abide by the letter of the law. Good. Uh, Good. Although I find it interesting also that once again it's the despised foreigner that does the right thing. And here you have a point that Luke is going to be making. Absolutely. But, but this Samaritan is not under this law that says go show yourself to a priest. Actually, he technically is. Because he lives there? Because the Samaritans also have the first five books of the scripture, of the Bible. Okay. And it's in Leviticus where that's dealt with. So they also must do it, okay? But they wouldn't go down to Jerusalem to do it, for sure. They would go to their local people, their local priest. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say the same thing that he did. So. Okay, all right. So the ten of them approach Jesus, they seem to know him, right? Okay, anything unusual about that? Well, clearly they'd heard about him or something because right. how many people are going to personally know him that actually need that? Right, so they've at least heard about him, and so they ask for mercy. Um, what does that mean? What mercy would they hope for? from anyone even. Well, so there's a lot of different ways to give mercy. Okay. Healing is one of, for sure. That's a good one. But kindness could also be one. Food could be one. I yes. Mean, Toss a coin that distance so they can yeah. use it to go buy food or something. Yeah, yeah. Good, okay. So, they are seeking mercy from Jesus. Now, if they have heard enough about it, they know he heals people. So I suspect that he is focused, on, they are focused on, they would like to be focused on healing, but I don't think it's, that would take faith. And I don't know that they had much of that at this point. They have hope or something. Except this foreigner. Except, well, that would go. Now, it says what next? What happened then next? He didn't actually, this time, he Thank didn't you. seem to have actually done anything. He just said, go, <laughs> show yourself to the priest. He didn't, he didn't stand up and wave and call upon on God. Or... And spit on Thank you. As, remember, Nahum said, well, he should have come out of his cave and he did all of this and blah, And he never, I'm really ticked off. Okay? Jesus does the same thing. He doesn't make a big show of it. He just says, go. He didn't even have him yeah, take a bath in the Jordan. No, no. Well, Jordan is about 30, 20 miles to the east, but he didn't, he didn't, go ahead. Did he want the priest to, to observe that they, were put, that they were healed? Yes. The priest is the doctor of the day, essentially. The, the, the um, religious doctor of the day. They have to certify that he has been healed, the, the leper. Okay, uh, and... So they have to go show to the priest first to show that they have been healed. And all ten of them walk away. We have to also recognize that in this day, leprosy was not the leprosy of today. It was any disease that appeared to look like that. Because they didn't, they didn't have tests like we do. Right, they don't so, have the tests. So they, they could be thrown in a lepra colony for something that today you would say, oh, so what? Okay, let's take a glance at what is leprosy. Yes, they did have true leprosy, mm -hmm. okay? But then it came to mean that anything that, that showed a um, whitening of something, like the skin or the, the house, you see these spots starting to appear in your house, it was considered to be leprous. It could be any skin disease or anything that, spotty, okay? Eczema. Yeah. Eczema, psoriasis, whatever, I don't know what those all are. So, it had expanded to include, now you do this for safety purposes, you know, it's like, gee, you have a cough, maybe you have a virus, a disease or something, we need to put you in a mask and isolate you for two weeks. 
you're being very careful because of transmission. If it were true leprosy, you definitely want to isolate it and stop it, correct? Yep. So that's the way the society handled it in general, okay? And then if you're going to be cured of it for whatever reason or think you are, you go see to a priest. What I think is kind of interesting if you ever go to Hawaii and particularly Maui, the last colony that I'm aware of was that has poor lepers, Maui. which is no longer considered to be contagious enough to warrant it, what I'm, there are people that have chosen to stay there yes. that are, have been leper. Uh -huh. Leper had that disease, but it's, they're treated and cured. And they have found safety in staying together. They're concerned still, even in this day and age, of going out and transmitting that disease even sure. though they don't have it. And they feel safer in society by staying together as a group. Sure, And I think sense. today, the last time I was there, that we toured that from a distance was, I think there's like 10. Okay. Ten people, and they're all very, very elderly right now. Uh, they used to have the colony, the, the leper colony. Was that on Maui? No. Yeah. No. Ka 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 well, anyway, I mean, it was on one of the islands on the north side of the island. It was a really ugly area. I do remember that. Um, okay, anything else that you're seeing so far? No, other than this was one of the scariest diseases that they knew anything about. Right. This was scary. And because in reality, when your fingers are falling off, and you, you know, that is a problem, and that is a scary thing to have happen to you. Okay, very good. All right. They did what they were told to do, didn't they? All ten of them. One of them violated what he was told to do. He actually did something that he was not supposed to do. He's supposed to go and show himself, but he goes along and goes, wait a minute. And what did he do? Well, Jesus. yes. Yeah. He came back. And fell on his face. And humbled himself and thanked Jesus. Okay? That's nice when even only 10% say thank you. I know that's hard, it is. We, are, we who tend to be in that 10% don't understand the 90. So I know we don't have records of it, but one of the things that I always questioned was, were these all permanently healed or just this one? Don't know. I'm gonna suggest that the 10 were, but I don't know. We have no record following it. But it shows, I mean, it, it does not show that uh, it does not show appreciation for what happened. Right. But I don't think Jesus would have cured on a temporary basis. It doesn't make sense yeah, to don't know. that. Because that would not, that would not fit his um, style, if you will. Yeah, I I just, it? It, yeah, the idea that he says, go show yourself to the priest, indicating they're, they're clean. Mm -hmm. And then they start on the way, and one turns back because he knows he's clean. The other ones look up themselves and say, oh, this is good, I'm healed. And then they get to the priest because they didn't go back. They get to the priest and they're not healed. That doesn't make sense to me, which is what you're saying. Okay? I suspect that they were healed, but that's my suspicion just as it was yours. Okay? The idea here is who is grateful enough to recognize Jesus as the Messiah and come back and thank God. Even though they're of a different cult. But it is the one that they would not have expected that from. Yeah, well that's the point of it, yes. Also, this is where the Samaritans would live in this general area. Samaritans and um, others. The, the regular Jew would live in this whole general, it's a mixture area. It lies between Galilee and Judea, it's in that border area. So they got together, all of them, these 10 just happened to come, and they get cured, they take off, one of them comes back. Are you going to be the one of them that thanks God for what they've done in your life? Well, and there's honestly, there's nothing to say that the others didn't thank God. No, only they didn't come back to say it. But they didn't recognize or Jesus. didn't feel it was necessary to come back to Jesus and right. express things. 
Yes, very good. I'm sure by the time they talk to the priest, they say, God, he, he, we were healed. Who else could do it? It's the changing of a punishment, and only God can do that. That's where Jesus is going to run into trouble. Okay? God punishing you because of something you've done and blesses you because you're good. That was the thing. If you're being punished, if you're having a disease, it's because God punished you. Okay? Anything else strike you here? Okay. Then let's take a look at it. After his return from Mount Tabor, Jesus let those around him know that he had decided to leave Capernaum and Galilee and would move his ministry elsewhere. His mind was made up. So, he's going to leave Capernaum and he's going to leave it for good. This is the Galilee. Some of his brothers who were in Capernaum thought that this was a great idea and long overdue. In a few weeks, the festival of booths would begin. Jesus should go to Jerusalem, attend the festival, and if he was the Messiah, then he should show everyone his power. The people would then proclaim Jesus as king. Any question, thought, or comment here? Well, to me, I would expect that even his brothers assumed this was a military king, like everyone else absolutely. thought. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you got to raise to raise an army. You got to have a lot of people in front of you. That's right. The only way to get a lot of people in is to advertise. Mm -hmm. You know, in some form or fashion. Okay. Any question here? But Jesus did not intend to be so obvious. Remember, Jesus calls us to live by faith, not by sight. He was doing that himself, and he expected everyone else around him to do the same. People must live by faith. Thus he told them that he had no intention of attending the festival to declare his political ambitions. He did not have any. So I've added that little thought. Okay? He had no intention whatsoever of declaring himself to be the political messiah. That's why he always told them to go and not tell what I did. The messianic secret. That's why he kept saying, shh, don't talk about this yet until it's been accomplished. And actually going to Jerusalem could have provoked more response, and it wasn't time. He needed, he needed to be at Passover. Right. Um, yeah. I, to go to Jerusalem declaring yourself to be the political Messiah would definitely have triggered everything immediately. Correct. He has no intention of doing that. I will clue you in. He is going to go down to the vessel. Okay, we'll get to that. John continues with him going to the vessel. I have to change his mind. So, but he's not doing it because he has no political ambitions. And that's what he tells his brothers. I have no political ambitions. This is my interpretation. Any questions, thoughts, or comments? <clears throat> Well, Jesus was the eldest, and in most families, yes. the eldest has some importance, and when he speaks, you should listen. Yes. And it's really hard to know. We, have, we really don't know how uh, Jesus' family actually felt about the things that they'd heard. You know that they were suspicious, probably. Mm -hmm. But uh, if he is held in that high regard, just in, in theory, they would at least... Um, uh, at least listen as a polite this is what you do. Right. On the other hand, they came and tried to take him back home because people were thinking he was crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But I can relate, I can, to, to what he is, uh, is saying. Okay. In my, is, using my family as an example, there is a juxtaposition to this. I am the oldest yes. of all my cousins. I was the firstborn. Um, when my dad came back from the service, all my mom and brothers and sisters. At this point in my life, one of the things that I am, I am very tired of being the oldest. I am very tired of people thinking and forgetting who I am because there's a distance. But thinking, you know, and when I think of Jesus, there had to have been a point if he was, you know, you considered that he was the oldest. There had to be times he said, hey, look, I've been talking to you, telling you stuff. I'm, I'm worn out. If you are, how, how long am I going to put up with this generation? Right. He just did this. Yeah. Uh, days before and here. I just find it. I just yeah. find it that it. You know, I never gave it much thought before because I was busily engaged in my marriage with you know raising my family, right. working my job, etc. And now that I'm retired and this issue with my wife's come up, I'm exhausted being the oldest. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone assumes that you're going to make the right decision. Everyone assumes that you know everything, that you're going to, you sure. know, whatever. And yet, like in Jesus' case, hey, I've done these, and why don't you listen to what I've done? Why don't you see what I've done? You know, type thing. And in this case, you know, I, I can't help but feel that Jesus must have gotten very, very frustrated just because he got so tired. I, I, still, I still look forward to my oldest brother saying, okay, uh, if I have a problem, can you lend me money? <laughs> well, He's the one who had it best. He had the genetics. He got all the advantages. So I looked to him in, in, in a difficult situation and sometimes for advice. But, you know, that's a habit I got into when I was young. And I haven't totally, I've pretty much broken it. But I haven't broken it completely. There's always that feeling in me that he is one step above. If we were back in the Middle Ages, he should be the king. I'll just be a prince. He deserves it. He's a better. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let him get assassinated. More I'm, diplomatic, if nothing else. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's move on then. Jesus is declaring to his to brothers that he does not have political ambition. He's not going to go down to Jerusalem to broadcast it. But Jesus did leave Capernaum. Jesus and his disciples walked south along the lake to Magdala. Oops, west along them, south from them. And then west on the way of the sea. I'll show you that in a moment. South past Mount Tabor and the hill of Morah, and then on south into the Israelian Valley, called the Valley of Jezreel. Okay, up here is where the Sea of Galilee is. So he leaves there, he comes down, coming down here, he passes Mount Tabor, where he had just been, he passes uh, Mora here, the hill of Mora. He comes down here, and he's going to either go towards Caesarea or wherever. He could go this way or this way because he's heading south. But he's right in this general area. You with me so far? It's called the Valley of Jezreel or the Israelian Valley. Up here is the Mount Carmel Range where Elisha stayed. So how far are we more or less from Ga from the Sea of Galilee? Oh, 20 miles. Okay. A good day's no, no walk. No more than that. Just a nice day's walk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, in those days, yeah. <laughs> they were more fit than we are. <laughs> yeah, they were. Uh, well, they, they, were they walked all the time. All the time. They were more used to it. They, anyway, so this is where, if you have to understand, this is the way of the, this is the, way of the sea. You're coming down through here, and it is here that Nahum would then go over to the Jordan River to bathe. This is where that historical event of God acting in history, this is where it occurred. This is what Jesus now is going to bring to mind, in my opinion. Okay? Question, thought, or comment? As Jesus and his disciples were crossing the Australian Valley, they approached the village of Australia, which lay on the border between Galilee to the north and Samaria to the south. 
From a distance came the shouts of men. Unclean, they called. Oh, we should do that, shouldn't we? You know, if you had a virus, maybe you should walk around yelling unclean. <laughs> For example, why would they do this? Well, it's in, the, in Deuteronomy, they are told to do that. This is the Israelian Valley, okay, today. It's a very fertile place, okay? Coming down from the Sea of Galilee, past Mount Tabor, they're going into, this is Israelian or Jezreel. So they're in this general area here, okay? And this valley is stretched out behind them, beside them, okay? And this would be the way, there's the Carmel Range, this would be the, the route, there's Megiddo, where the big fortress was put to help control and tax those who went on the way from the north, Syria and Assyria and Babylon, south to Egypt. This is the controlling factor. Okay? So, this is that general area. Any question? thought or comment so far as to where it's happening. Okay. So they approach yelling out, I'm clean. They were lepers following the law of Leviticus. A leper, quote, had leprosy, end quote, which might consist of almost any blotching or mottling of the skin. A house with moldy walls was leprous. Rough, patchy, scaly sin, skin was leprous. True rep leprosy brought a significant fear factor, which we've talked about, such that anyone with leprosy, or anything that might look like it in any grim fashion, had to live apart. They had to wear ragged clothes, from a distance, tell folks that they were unclean. This is all in Leviticus. This is how they're supposed to act. Gathering in groups was common, as was begging, and thievery was not uncommon. Questions, thoughts, or comments? A tough way of life if you're only having, a, you know, a little reaction to some sun. She, I've got a sunburn, huh? Well, no. we, we do know people have also um, uh, allergic reactions to things that will do that sort of thing to their skin. We know that today, yes. That, that, but, but they didn't know that then. No, they didn't. In, in my mind, when I hear the term leprosy, for them, it would come to mind what we would think if someone told you you had cancer or some other incurable it, Yes, ailment. some major thing, right. Good, you're right. And they had to protect the society. Mm -hmm. Okay? Hi, you've got the plague. <laughs> As in bubonic. Yeah, there's going to have to be some reaction to that. To protect the town or the village or even your family. So they had to be separated. This is according to Leviticus. They had to stay away from others. They had to wear ragged clothes that identified them at a distance. And they had to yell out that they are unclean. So leprosy was something you could get by just being by somebody with it. That, doesn't that was the sense. theory at the yeah. time. You yeah. could catch it by touching yeah. someone. Not something That's why you never body. touched somebody like that. You would, you would be unclean if you touched the person yeah. who was injured. Go ahead. Well, another, another side of this just occurring to me too, though, it shows, the, even though I, there's so much in, the, in Deuteronomy and Leviticus that I absolutely abhor, it does show the intelligence that God has given us that he would create, these books would be created, to me it would be kind of like a doctor having a, a medical book. Yes. Because they would, like we were, we're all saying, you know, at that time frame, they didn't have the, the, the knowledge and the medicines and so on. Right. They had to come up with ways to deal with these issues because they didn't have the life span either. Right. And, it, and they came up with so many different ways to deal with these different diseases like they, 
like we're saying, the, the leprosy at that time was a huge box. Yeah. And what I think about what I did for a living when I started, uh, when special education came into being in 1974, there were four categories. By the time I left special ed, you couldn't. Ca yeah, that's exactly right because they kept dividing it. Right. And they said no specifying and clarifying it. Right. And, and, and yeah. to me, this would be like the start of that. The, Good. The see, Good. In kids, you said it earlier. You know, it was such a broad category. You could drop anything. Yeah. In there. And so again. It's because the society has to take care of itself, because God cared about them as a group, that he, that he, this is developed. For example, you didn't like their dietary laws, probably, a whole lot, okay? But they were developed for health purposes at the very least, and God was directing that to keep his people healthy and free. There's another part to that, too. Go ahead. Because God wanted the Israelite people to look and be separate from the surrounding people Correct. to avoid the temptations the surrounding countries had. Yes. And so by doing things that forced the Israelites to keep to themselves, they also reduced the um, impact of the local culture. Good. That is also correct. So, here you have, they are instructed precisely, these people have been designated as leprous, these ten men. And they are following the law. They come from a distance, they're in ragged clothes, and they yell, unclean. And what would they do? They're begging for mercy. Give us anything. Have mercy on us. Okay? Uh, which is better than coming over and jumping on top of you and stealing everything. Because that would happen too. People get very desperate, they will do desperate things. But we also don't know when they asked for mercy, did they know Jesus could heal or were they looking for whatever they could beg? Yes, either or. We don't know. Um, maybe one of them or all ten of them knew about Jesus as a healer, but we don't know that. The author certainly tells us that, he's, that they called him Jesus so they knew his name at least, Yeshua. Okay. So Joshua, if you will, that's the same basic name. So they knew, at least the author tells us that they knew of him. Okay, I'm expanding it to allow for all the other ones to simply say, we'll take whatever you've got, just have mercy on us. But we could go both ways. So here we go. There were quite a large number of lepers approaching. The ten is a large number looking to Jesus and his disciples for help. Some food, a spare blanket or cloak for the coming winter, or maybe some money would be greatly appreciated. But Jesus had other plans. Jesus is going to take this opportunity to remind them of what God has done for them. He simply told them to go show themselves to a priest. Okay. A leper could be declared clean by a priest upon examination and the offering of a sacrifice as described in Leviticus. Then they would be allowed to return to their life. Do I have a question? Sure. Do we know who was with Jesus at this time other than these lepers? We know that the disciples were at least most of them, if not all of the disciples, and any others who were following him down south. So he probably had an entourage. Yes, he had an entourage. Okay. Okay. I don't think he was afraid of being attacked. Yeah. But still, you know, one or two lepers, you know, that's you know, not too scary, but if you throw ten guys coming at you, that could be a potential problem for someone that isn't in a significant group. Well, in a, a, communi a communicable disease, a communicable disease, too, disease. Would, yeah. Could be a scary thing. True. Yeah. Normally you would travel south in a caravan. Okay, especially if you're going through Samaria and you're a Jew going to Jerusalem. Okay, but there's enough crowd of his disciples and other entourage with him that he is essentially a caravan. That would be how I would perceive it. Okay. Okay, anything else you might notice here? Notice that the priest is risking something here. If it's true leprosy, and if it's contagious, 
The priest has got to examine this person in some fashion to, to declare them not to be leprous. That means they have to get close. And they probably did not understand how you exchange uh, microbes. Oh, no, no. They did yeah. not understand that. Deep. They know that it was communicable. Yeah. In some fashion, there was a way it was transmitted. Bad this air. This is what they feared. Bad air, bad water. Yeah. 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 Bad, bad vibes. Who knows? Uh, but they, uh, the priest is going to have to risk something as a doctor has to risk something. Those people, the doctors who were looking during the Great Plague, they went to examine them. A number of them died because they caught the plague, okay, which was transmitted with bites from the fleas, but it doesn't matter. They risk. So I have to respect the priest here. Mm -hmm. Go show yourself to a priest. Oh, what would be your reaction to that? Well, so for one, if you're clean, if your skin really is clean, it's got it to isn't. Pay. It isn't. They're, they're leprous. Right, but once they're cured. Ah, okay. I'm right here at this point where he says go. Oh. Now what do you think? Oh, okay. Ah, not what happens later when they look as they're walking. Grumble, grumble, mumble. What, what, well, aren't you going to do something? Just go show yourself to a priest. Wow, that is so simple. That calls for faith. Yeah. Jesus constantly calling for faith. That reminds me of Oral Roberts. Of we what again? Back in the, the he, he was famous as a healer. Who? Oral, 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 Oral Roberts. Roberts. Okay, go ahead. But what I always found interesting about it was is that the, were the people when he supposedly cured them, was their faith in him or was it in Jesus? It doesn't matter. That, that's it, yeah, it didn't matter. But it was the way he approached it was he, was he had that contact. He would slap his hands onto their heads and he would squeeze. Right. And everything's worth. But my point is, is that when you take risks, there was a man that was willing to take a risk and say he was, was he were healed. Oh, yeah. But we have people like that today all over the place that are claiming that they can do these things. Yes, and it's are. very, you know, without medicine. Right, I understand. Yeah. Okay, and it works sometimes. The idea of what the human body can, mind can do for the body or whatever is certainly part of that. But frankly, if God wants to suddenly do a miracle and heal you out of nothing, it can be done. You just have to understand that is real. Okay? Most of us in this day and age don't want to believe that. Okay? But I think we should. Okay, so he says, go show yourself to the priest and then offer the sacrifices which are required. Notice this two-part thing. Okay? So, in faith, they turn around, all ten of them going, they start mumbling and walking around going, what, did, what happened? And, and as they're leaving, as they leave, they walk away, what happens? After a short discussion among themselves, the lepers all left for their group home base to get their things. Of course, go back to get your stuff. You're healed, get your stuff that you have that's valuable, that you've collected. Most of them were Galilean and would have had to take the long trip to Jerusalem to show themselves. But one would only have to go to Shechem because he was a Samaritan. Okay, now they don't have to go to Jerusalem. They could have gone to their local priest in charge of the synagogue. Um, and that would be fine. But nine of them apparently would have been going up, up into Galilee. One of them would have gone down into Samaria. Okay? Question, thought, or comment here? It does seem funny to me, a little bit funny to me, that you would have a Samaritan in with these Jews, even though they were all ostracized. Well, let's work that out. Okay. You have a, these people are all kicked out of society because they're leprous. And they're living on the border between Samaria and Galilee. Gee, it should be nice to have some of each group so that you could lead you into that area so you could go talking to them and begging and, and maybe go stealing, whatever. When you got together, it'd be nice to have some of both. You don't have, no more do you have to stick with your cult. The Jerusalem cult or, uh, 
or the Samaritan cult. You could intermingle, and it would be to your benefit to do so. Okay. Is that a reasonable thought? Well, okay. Yes? I'm just puzzled, too. When they Good. were cured, when did they recognize it? Immediately? When they were healed? They to see the priest. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's see. When did they find out they were actually healed? Yeah. Is what you're asking. Well, let's go on then. Samaritans seem to have right away. They're headed back toward their group home, wherever it is. While they were preparing for their journey, they noticed that they were healing. You see, you anticipated me. They realized that if they had not done as Jesus said, they would not have been healed. They also remembered that not far from here, just 20 miles to the west, the great prophet Elijah had told a doubting Syrian named Naaman who had leprosy, to go to the Jordan River and bathe seven times. If he had not done as he was told, he would not have been healed. But he did follow the instructions to bathe. He went to the Jordan River 15 miles to the east and bathed seven times and was cured. Thoughts? Questions? I'm sorry, I'm confused now. Are we was it Elijah or Elisha with names? We're looking back to Elisha, Elijah, I think. Well, yeah, I think Should be Elijah. Read, let's go yeah. to 2 Kings. Yeah. Five, yeah. 2 Kings I, 5. I think, 10. I think yeah. it was. I think it was Elisha. It said Elisha, I think. But I always thought it was Elijah. Okay. Well, uh, what was it? 2 Kings. 2 Kings 5. Okay, name and. There you go. Which one? Looking. Okay, so it's Elijah, so I have this incorrect. I'll change that. Thank you for calling that. Yes. But when they were cured, they got to the priest. Yes. They didn't have anything to really give him. Didn't they? Well, let's find out about that because you're again anticipating the next thing. Okay? Because you're taking the step that you're supposed to, which is, okay, now we know that they've been healed. Now they have to do something about it. Okay? Here we go. Let's go on. All were glad to be healed, but only one returned to find Jesus. The one who was considered to be uncouth because of his ancestry got on his knees at Jesus' feet to thank him. So typical, thought Jesus. The Jews never acknowledged the authority of Jesus, though he had been sent to help them. But foreigners did. Whether it was the widow at Zarephath, or whether it was the um, feeding of the 4,000 on the east side, whether it was the man who was healed legion, the foreigners are recognizing Jesus' authority. And the Jews will not. Most of them, anyway. Most of them, yes. So Certainly if the Jews them. all accepted Jesus' authority, the scripture couldn't have been fulfilled. That's right. It would have been a completely, he never would have been crucified. So let's, we're not going to go, we, we know that they had to, to do that. We knew that it was going to happen. Uh, he knew it was going to happen. He talked to Moses and Elijah about it. Okay, he just had to walk through the, in faith and do what was called for him to do. Let's go on. From there, Jesus would head south through Samaria on his way to Jerusalem to return only once again to Galilee. And next week, there will be fire from heaven. Okay.